For years, they've been embraced by Europeans, shunned by Americans. Uh, this could pertain to any number of things. Lately, I am talking about hatchbacks. The Scion IM is unapologetically proud to be one. It's not hiked up and dressed as a small crossover. I'm staying far away from any possible puns. If this car were wearing a Toyota badge, I would be willing to wager an awful lot of money that it would be called Matrix. I mean, really, this is a capital M. Like the late lamented Matrix, IM is based on Corolla bones, adding a more sophisticated double wishbone rear suspension. Outside the US, IM is called Corolla Hatchback or Aris. Uh, Matrix still sounds good to me. Why buy this over the similarly sized Corolla sedan? Cargo flexibility. Corolla can swallow six packs of this stuff. I am only five, but the Scion's large hatch lets bigger things, such as bikes and furniture, into the car, especially with the seats dropped, just like a small crossover. Scion's no-haggle pricing policy means buyers basically walk into a showroom, choose a color, and then add accessories such as a navigation upgrade or spoiler. Uh, they would pay about 20 grand in the case of this particular car. The only substantial choice is transmission, either a six-speed manual or this continuously variable unit that simulates a seven-speed automatic gearbox. There is no option for keyless ignition. The 1.8-liter four-cylinder gives drivers 137 horsepower and 126 pound-feet of torque to work with. A GTI this is not. Zero to 60 is leisurely in just under nine seconds. IM is more engaging in the curves than most compact crossovers because of its lower stance. The body stays pretty flat in cornering. Not a lot of road feel though, pretty numb steering. Toyota engineers did a good job of dialing in a ride quality that's comfortable, but doesn't feel like driving a bowl of pudding. Overall, IM is pretty quiet, but uh, put your foot in it, you'll definitely hear the engine. The continuously variable transmission does an okay job of mimicking a traditional gearbox, but there are some of those rubbery dynamics still happening here. The CVT offers slightly better fuel economy than the manual. I managed 28 miles per gallon, heavy on city driving. Inside, you'll notice the Corolla vibe. The flat dashboard is mounted high. There are a few touches that elevate the ambiance. The climate control is automatic and dual zone. The deeply bolstered seats are good for a hug too. Tunes sound fine, and there are apps available. Most owners will just use their phones. Friends and family will be just fine back here, as long as they're not unusually tall. Foot and legroom are good. Lack of a power port is bad. There are multiple places to stash your Java, Joe. Yes, there are belts for three, but only two adults at a time will be comfortable here. IM is a sharp-looking hatch, affordable too. Then again, competitors Ford Focus, Mazda 3, and Volkswagen Golf can be too. And you have to wonder, is a separate brand needed to sell it? An honest hatchback, IM would be just as appealing and useful with a Toyota badge. All right, if you're looking to buy this, you'll also want to check out the competition. So, in addition to Golf, Focus, and Mazda 3, I can see Mazda CX-3, Honda Fit, and HRV, plus Kia Soul and Forte Hatch. Any crossover with front drive is worth considering as well. Also, it sounds like Honda Civic and Chevy Cruze have hatchback models on the way. I'm sure I've missed a couple. Diss me in the comments. There you go, gang. That's my take on the 2016 Scion IM. Remember, hatchbacks rule. That's driven. I'm Tom Volk. By the way, did anybody get my vibe reference?